Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Joseph and today I'm going to be discussing my TMUA experience, the score I got, which offers I got from that score and how to prepare for the test. Just a reminder that if you're applying for maths, computer science or economics or other similarly mathematical courses at top ranking universities like Warwick, UCL, LSE, Durham, Imperial or Cambridge, you will need to sit the TMUA, so pay attention to what comes next. Firstly, I'm going to start with my score. I got a 5.9, which was enough to get me offers from Imperial and Warwick, the only two TMUA universities that I applied to. A 5.9 is roughly equal to a 7.0 from 2023 and before. They changed the scores in 2024, so before I assumed people would aim for 7.0 and universities would expect a 6.5 or above. A 6.5 is now roughly a 5.0 in 2024 and after. If you want to understand the breakdown of the changes they made, I found a video that I've linked down below in the description from Vantage Admissions that you might want to watch. Now, the best and pretty much the only way to prepare for the TMUA is by completing practice questions. I'd recommend looking for some practice questions online as there are many more resources now than there were maybe three or four years ago. In terms of past papers specifically, there is a limited number of past papers, so you need to be strategic with them and not waste them too soon. If you haven't started revising for the TMUA and it is the 18th of August, what are you doing? You need to start immediately. I started around the start of August and I still got a 5.9 and I still got an Imperial Math so far. So it's definitely possible, but you just need to be focused and consistent with your practice. The first thing I did was look through the specification. When I started my preparation for the TMUA, I made sure to get the specification from the website and put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Then I went through every single point in the specification and read through it before completing a practice question on everything, just to make sure I understood the basic idea. If there was something I didn't understand or hadn't learned yet, I tried to self-teach that. For example, sequences and series is a year two A-level maths topic, so most people won't have learned it by the time they sit the TMUA if they do the exam in October. If you're looking for support with the TMUA, the first channel I would watch is r 2 Jutu because if you don't, then you should be because he has the most comprehensive set of resources and videos for the TMUA out of everyone I've seen on YouTube. There are some specific videos that he's done that helped me in the real exam because the exact style of questions came up. They were lifesavers. To prepare for paper two, the first thing you need to do is look at the logic and proof notes that the UAT website has. UAT is the organization that runs the TMUA. These notes are about 80 pages long, but they're well worth reading. And it's important to make sure you understand them because these are the people that are making the test questions that you'll answer when you sit the TMUA in October or January. Before reading these notes, I thought I understood the specification points pretty well, but after I read through them and done some of their questions, I got a much better foundation and understanding of what they were asking. And that helped me perform pretty well in the actual paper two in October when I sat it for real. If you want any more specific advice or tips, R2 Jutu has a great logic and proof playlist that I watched many times. I watched some videos maybe 12 times. So if you don't understand the first time you watch a video, don't be disheartened because part of the test is making sure you understand how to reason well. And that doesn't necessarily come by watching one video once. If you get a question wrong while you're preparing for paper two, I think it's really important you look into it more so than paper one. Seeing as the paper is so based on how you can explain and reason things, it's less likely you made a silly mistake and more probable that you don't yet understand what the question is asking. If your school offers any specific team way advice or support, I'd recommend getting that or attending those after school classes or whatever. My sixth form had that, but I couldn't attend due to other commitments that I had that clashed at the same time. In terms of past papers, I went through everything in chronological order. Just be mindful that as the years progress, the past papers get increasingly more difficult. For my first score, I got 21, 23, out of 40 in the 2016 practice paper and the 2017 past paper. Whenever I got the question wrong, I would make sure to look up the answer so that I understood the question as best I could, even well enough to explain to someone else if I needed to. Then I screenshotted the question and put it in a blank OneNote page for me to go through and store as my difficult questions. Whenever that bank reached 20 questions, or if I got less than 12 out of 20 on a past paper I did, I'd either reattempt the whole past paper or treat that bank of difficult questions as if they were a past paper under timed conditions because I had already seen the answers. I would even cut the time a little bit shorter because I should have already known the answers. So for example, for my difficult questions bank, I'd give myself 60 minutes instead of 75 minutes like you have in the real CMUA. In my experience, it's better to use three past papers really well 
than to do 10 past papers without properly understanding your mistakes and where you went wrong. So what about if you do end up running out of past papers? I know a lot of people in my year who did run out of past papers and they struggle to find some additional resources in the next coming month before the TMUA exam. There are some resources you can use. I recommend starting free before getting paid resources, but don't be afraid to invest in your future if you need to. The first resource I'd recommend is the ECAA, which is a discontinued Cambridge Economics exam. There are some past papers on physics and math tutor that I've linked in the description down below. So they have a section one that has an advanced maths part, and these questions in the advanced maths part are really similar to the same questions they ask in the team way, even in how they look like the font and everything. I got this recommendation from an R2 Drew 2 video, so if that isn't any more evidence that you should be watching his videos already, then I don't know what will convince you. Secondly, I recommend doing MAT questions. I was already preparing for the MAT because I applied to Oxford, but I would recommend doing MAT questions in terms of the multiple choice ones from previous years, even if you're only sitting in Team UA. As the Team UA gets more and more difficult, the MAT and the Team UA are getting increasingly similar. In fact, I saw one MAT question appear on the Team UA exactly, like it was exactly the same question. However, I understand that MAT questions are much more difficult than Team UA questions, especially when it comes to topics like graphing and sketching. So it's best to understand the topic and be overprepared than to be underprepared. But if you don't fully understand the most tricky parts, I wouldn't be too worried either way. In terms of paid resources, I watched the video last year when I was revising for the Team UA by Tamaris Tips, and she recommended a textbook for the Team UA and Team UA Ninja. These questions focus on paper one, so if you want more practice with those and you want to become more confident, then I'd recommend those resources that she said in the video. The exact link to the textbook is something I can't find, but I've linked her video down below if you want to watch it. She also recommended some AMSP resources. So I think it stands for Advanced Maths Support Program, and they offer some paid courses, but they don't always have places, so you need to book as soon as possible if you want a place on their program where they essentially explain some TMUA ideas and concepts to people, people who attend their remote classes. So a very common question that people ask is how many questions should you do a day? And that honestly depends on how early you start. If you're starting in a few days or right now to prepare for the January TMUA sitting, then I'd recommend doing maybe three questions a day to start with. I mean, three questions doesn't sound like a lot, but if your priority is just learning the content and making sure you understand the specification. Three questions is a pretty normal amount. And also, because it's maybe four months, five months until you sit the TMUA exam in January, that's five months of three questions a day. So if you multiply that, that's, that's more than 10 years worth of past papers, and there aren't even that many out yet. However, if you're starting now and you want to do the TMUA in October, then you need to be doing 10 questions a day, I'd recommend. Make sure to start with five or so questions just to get a hang of, just to get a hang of the specification and make sure you understand the content before doubling the amount of time you spend to 10 questions a day. Start spending lots of time on questions and reduce the time accordingly. Spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes on a question if it's a really hard one that you don't quite understand. But develop your skill of understanding a question and getting the answer without looking at the mark scheme because this problem solving ability is what you need to solve the most difficult surprise TMUA questions at the end that you might not have seen before and that you might not understand at first glance. If you're watching this video at the start of October and you're sitting it in October or something, then you just need to learn as much content as you can from videos and do as many past papers as you can before the TMUA. By the way, when I say you need to complete a certain number of questions per day, I don't mean daily. I mean, that's what you need to do in a day. But it's good to take regular off days so that you can relax and retain the information better. And that will help you progress further in your Team UA revision because you're actually retaining what you learn. Just as an extra piece of advice, don't neglect topics that you might think are easy, like shapes, because these actually form the basis of the most difficult questions, especially since people are most likely to skip over them when they're revising because they think they already understand them, or well, that is a GCSE topic that they did ages ago. I think that one of the most difficult questions I answered was a reasoning question about the properties of a parallelogram. And you don't think about these sorts of things, you're just supposed to know them, right? But in a team where you actually get examined on them, and if you make a silly mistake because you haven't seen the concept before, 
you're not going to have enough time to answer the rest of the questions and you might run out of time in your actual exam. Next, I'm going to talk about sitting and booking the team UA test or exam. Since 2024, Pearson View has been administering TMUA exams as well as some other university admissions test exams. So you will need to book your test yourself online with Pearson View. I think last year I paid £75, I don't know if that's the same this year. And you need to book a slot from a test centre that's near you. There is a 25 mile radius that you're allowed to book a test centre in from your address. I booked my TMUA exam at the end of August and there were hardly any spaces available, so I almost didn't get a slot to sit the exam. And I had to go travel for nearly two hours in order to do it. There were a few others that were nearer to my, to my house, but the times were about 3 a.m., 2 a.m., midnight. Yes, these are real times that you can sit the TMUA at. I know someone at my school who had to book a hotel so that he could sit the TMUA at midnight which is obviously a horrendous experience. So if you can avoid that by booking your test right now, then I would do so right now. On test day, I'd recommend bringing your driver's license instead of your passport if you have one. And if you don't, then I'd recommend applying for one because it's much lower stakes in case you lose it. And it's quicker to sign in because it's just a quick check and that's it. You don't have to flick through pages or anything like that. Finally, I'm going to be discussing my experience of sitting the TMUA exam. When I arrived to my test center, I realized it was quite large. It was in a secluded area, so I had to register at a reception and everyone who had gone for the team UA just lined up essentially before going down to this basement area. I would say that attending a large test center was really chaotic because there were people who came an hour early and there were also people who came half an hour late and they were just trying to get all the late people in so that they could complete the exam in time before missing their slot. There might have been like 200 people or something at around around that at the same time. So they are trying to register all of these people and there were so many people in the same area that they couldn't really find the people they were looking for. Also because there was so much commotion and chaos, there were some people who had just done the TMUA who were also communicating with people who hadn't yet sat the exam, who had maybe an hour left to wait. Um, that kind of stressed me out. So I sat in the corner. I think there were a few seats in my test center near some office that was there because it was a, it was a test center yes but it was also some sort of a business office so i sat in those seats and i kind of just ate a snack beforehand trying to remember everything if you're traveling far i would recommend having a snack as well just because it's it's a very grueling experience yeah right before i sat the team away they gave me some laminated paper a whiteboard pen and three baby wipes to wipe away the whiteboard pen i also had to put my bag away in a locker and I had to keep the key with me as well as my ID so that they could confirm I was who I was. And um, I got some earplugs as well, but that was optional. When it was time to actually start the test, they took me into a room with other people on a computer doing the test. So I had to log in and basically start the team away with my Pearson View ID. Then when I started the test, it started immediately, 75 minutes. You could see all of the questions at the same time, even though it was digital. And there was a menu so you could flick through the questions and you could also star questions for review if you wanted to come back to them later. Before you submitted at the end, they would tell you to review the questions that you had starred and like either take it off or answer the question or whatever. When I finished paper one, it wasn't necessarily a 15 minute break. It was straight into paper two. I understand that on the online system, it says 165 minutes, but the extra 15 minutes is just people getting registered. It's not actual, it's not an actual break. By the way, I know that some people in 2024 had just pencil and paper at the test center, so they didn't have the laminated paper and whiteboard pen. So, um, I don't know if that was just for that year or if it's going to be a different thing in different test centers from now on. Maybe they were just adjusting, but I don't know. In terms of how I found the papers personally, I preferred paper one to paper two, but I completed paper two way quicker than I completed paper one just because there wasn't as much content and it's, it's a quicker paper to complete because it's more reasoning than working through difficult questions. I know that they haven't released the results yet, so I'm not going to discuss the questions in detail, but I spoke to my friends who had also done the test and apparently they didn't have all of the same questions as I did. So maybe they have a question bank they're using. The way I answered the questions was I looked through as many questions as I could right at the start and any questions I knew the answer to straight away, I'd answer within the first two minutes of seeing the question. Any other questions that I knew I'd need to spend a little bit more time on or that looked like they required a lot of working out, I saved for later parts in the paper. This is because 
when I did it, the question order was randomized. So it's not necessarily the easiest questions at the start and the more difficult questions at the end. This is why you need to be incredibly resourceful with your time and understand which questions will require more time by having done practice. Anyway, that's all for the video. If you're interested in more study content, I'll be posting multiple times a week until this time next year. So consider subscribing if that's what you're interested in. I'll see you in the next video.